this video, I'm going to talk about types of hazards in the food industry. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm Adi Barshad and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, then I make simple and easy to understand lectures, videos and tutorials for the students of food science and food technology. So if you want to level up your grades and simplify your studies, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. So this is part two of the food safety series in which I'm going to talk about the types of hazards that are found in the food industry. And if you haven't watched the part one that I made on the food safety and why is it important, I would recommend you that please go and watch that one first, that video first, because if you don't uh, watch that video, you may not understand some certain words that I used in this video. So if you have watched the part one, let's move on to this video, to this lecture in which I'm going to talk about the types of hazards in the food industry. What is a hazard? A hazard is any kind of agent that has the potential to cause damage, illness or injury to anyone. There are a lot of hazards that are found in the food industry, but these hazards are classified or categorized in three major categories and the first category is the biological hazards. Biological hazards involve bacteria, fungi, virus, parasites, worms and different microorganisms or pathogens that cause disease or illness or infections or poisonings in humans. Now when you intake food, there are some hazards and risks involved when you intake that food, when you consume that food. Now, there are some sort of foodborne illness that may be associated with that food and these foodborne illnesses are classified in two categories. The first one is food intoxication and the second one is food infection. Now, what is the difference between food intoxication and food infection? The difference is really simple. If you consume some live microorganisms that are present in the food or some live pathogens that are present in your food, then if these microorganisms or pathogens make your stomach or intestines upset or cause some disease or illness, then that is involved in food infection. But if you intake the toxins that are produced by these pathogens or microorganisms, then the disease is specifically termed as food intoxication. Now, one of the most interesting factors about food intoxication is that the microorganism, microorganisms may be already dead in the food. Uh, it may be possible that in a container of the food, the microorganisms or pathogens have produced some sort of toxins and after that, the food is processed. The microorganisms may be killed, but the toxin may still be present and that can cause some kind of disease or illness to your body. Hey, what happened? I consumed this Yakult and it says 6.5 billion lactobacillus casei strain Shirota. I'm going to have food poisoning now. No, that's not true. You're not going to have food poisoning by consuming Yakult. You liar. You just said that ingesting some microorganisms will cause food poisoning, food infection, food intoxication. Am I dumb? Oh, no, no, no. Let me just clarify my point. There are some good microorganisms and, there, and then there are some bad microorganisms. The good microorganisms have been used since ages in fermentation, in curd making, in yogurt making, cheese making process, and even in the probiotics such as Yakult. And these microorganisms do not cause any kind of food poisoning or infections or diseases. Rather, they are used or implemented in a food to improve the health or improve some sort of mechanism in the human body. And then there are bad microorganisms or pathogens that we call them pathogens more specifically because pathogens are the microorganisms that cause disease in the human body. So you can relax, right? Thank goodness. Now let's move on to hazard number two and that is physical hazards. Physical hazards involve paper, stones and nails or bolts or jewelry or buttons or fabric or thread from your cloth. All these things, if they enter in the food, can cause an injury to the human body. Let me just take an example of how the glass can enter into your food. See, in a bottling plant or a beverage plant, there are some bottles present like this one and they have to be capped with uh, this cap. And what happens that sometimes the 
equipments that is placing the cap on top of this bottle may not be aligned properly and it may be shaking or the conveyor uh, under this bottle may be shaking vigorously. So what could happen that the cap may or may not be placed uh, exactly where it has to be. So it could lead to breakage of some kind of glass, some kind of particle of glass and that could drop down into the food. And that is how the glass piece or glass particle can enter into the food and cause injury to your system. Similarly, paper or stones or wood or metal pieces or thread or fabric from your cloth can enter into the food and cause some kind of injury or some kind of harm to your body. Moving on to hazard number three and that is chemical hazards. Now the chemical hazards are subcategorized or subdivided into three categories. The first one is the naturally present, the second one is directly added and the third one is indirectly added. The naturally occurring chemical hazards that are present in the food can cause some kind of allergies or some kind of toxication inside the body. And some of the examples of naturally present toxins in the food are histamine or aflatoxin that is a mycotoxin. Now what are all these terms? I'm going to discuss these uh, scientific terms later in my videos but all you need to know for now is that there are some allergens or some kind of chemicals or toxins that are already present, naturally present in the food. These food could be peanuts or soybean or eggs or fishes and so on. The second subcategory is the directly added ingredients or additives in the food. Now, if the additives or preservatives are in the permitted amount, in the permitted quantity, they may not cause any kind of hazard. But if they exceed the permitted quantity, they can cause some sort of hazard or some kind of illness in the body. A lot of food business operators also implement or also add some kind of adulterants that are harmful for your body and these are included in the directly added or added on purpose ingredients or chemical hazards in the food. The third category is the indirectly added chemical hazards or chemicals in the food. These chemical hazards can enter into the food from the fertilizers, from pesticides, from weedicides, from antibiotics, from the coatings, from the paints that are used, from the lubricants, from the cleaning and sanitizing agents. Now what are the sources from which these chemical hazards or these chemicals enter into the food? These chemicals can enter from the vehicle emissions, from the agriculture, from the poor agricultural practices, from the landfills and from the industrial waste and some effluents or discharge from the industries. Now all of these waste material, all of these pollution or all of these hazardous chemicals enter into the crops and enter into the seafood through the water or enter into the livestock. And when we consume that food from the crops, from the seafood, from the livestock, what happens that these chemicals directly enter into our food and they can lead to some chemical hazards, they can lead to some diseases because these chemical hazards are not only, go, uh, not only going to uh, cause some food poisoning or food diseases, but they can even cause some major diseases like cancer because these vehicle emissions and some industrial waste also involve also include a lot of amounts of heavy amounts of lead and mercury and these are some carcinogens that are cancer producing agents and these can cause cancer in your body and the worst thing about these chemicals hazards or these toxicants is that if you are just consuming a little amount it may be intraceable but if you consume these small amounts for a long period of time they can cause a very serious health issue or serious health disease in your body. So this was it for today. Let me know down in the comments if you have uh, not understood some kind of concept or some kind of definition or an example. I will make sure that I reply to each one of you and like this video and share this video as maximum as possible and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you want to level up your grades and simplify your studies. Thank you. Class dismissed.